Oh, I don't know. <laughs> How should we start this episode, guys? I wonder. I really wonder. I haven't got a clue what to do. Let's see here. So I thought about it for a, a fair bit, and I think I got it figured out now. We're going to go with a, a hello. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm feeling pretty generous today as well. So I think I'm going to give you a free, uh, how's it going? Oh, you like that? That's pretty good. Okay, that's enough chit chat. Let's get serious here. <laughs> let's talk. Uh, let's talk head games action. What's been going on here? Well, we're on day eighteen. I think there's twenty days total, so it's coming to an end very, very soon here. And we are doing. Gr oh, that's not us. We're doing. No, oh, that's not us. Nope. Well, oh, here we are. <laughs> we're in a very respectable, very close uh, sixth place here. Just a few thousand points difference. I don't play games to win. I play to have fun. That's not loser talk. <laughs> uh, I actually found out it's very profitable. Like sometimes my head ends up on this bounty board. Like people want to kill me. I see I'm up here again. 150 points. If anybody hands in my head at the moment, I'm a special bounty. Yeah, so the other day something kind of crazy happened. Uh, Cub and Scar are competing with each other in the head games and they started auctioning for who gets to kill me. Sold to Good Time and Scar for 11 and a half stacks of TNT. Oh, oh, just in the nick of time. Wait a sec. This is not good. This is not good. <laughs> oh, that's a nice shot, man. Gotta try and take Bye. him out. We gotta. All right, all right. Let's let's do this transaction, man. Here, here. I owe you TNT Biz in exchange for your head. This <laughs> is happening here. Oh, no. I think we can take him out oh, yeah. from here. There's stuff there, though, Cub. No, no. We it's see, already. Should we see what we've he already has? done? It. No, no, no need. I'm no curious need. Curious now. I don't know. No need. I mean, twelve stacks of TNT. This is this is There's guaranteed TNT. TNT. It's true. Shulker shells. Oh, this is free Ooh. free stuff. Free stuff. So Scar was trying to bribe me to steal my head from under a Cub's nose there. Oh. Got him. <laughs> But it didn't end too well for him. There well, will be no deal today. That settles that, I guess. I'm all yours. Okay. I'm just going to straight up, straight up slay. Straight up slay. You ready? Oh, I'm there ready. he is. All right. We're going oh. for it. Oh, <laughs> just as Scar walks into the background. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Cub. I appreciate Cheers it. Cheers for that. And that is the story, my friends, about where these 12 stacks of TNT came from. We're going to be using these later this episode. I got a plan for them. Yeah, so I'm trying to set an early goal for myself on Hermitcraft here to finish my projects. It's a crazy notion, uh, but I'm really going to try to do it. Uh, I have that issue where I don't like to only work on one project at a time. I like to have several going, and then I choose what I want to do that day. But the problem with that is I sometimes leave stuff and uh, don't get around to it. So this ice shop, for example, we built it one day. But I didn't do the interior on it. So now I've come back to it. We've got the interior looking much nicer, I think. Uh, it's still pretty simple, but, you know, it's it's a lot better than it was. So we enter the building here. We got our an empty cup waiting for us. We got a brewing stand with our choice of our hot beverage. You know, it's a cold place. We want something warm. We got coffee. We got tea. We got hot cocoa. And we come to the counter here, and you can see we got ourselves a very eye-catching rug. You know, East Persian, I believe. Uh, you know, gets... It's people thinking about money, and then they spend money. Yes, and we now have someone to take the money. <laughs> a little employee is the employee of the month. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We got our Ice Queen medallion up here and our Iceman medallion together. Amazing. A little decorative stuff over here, plus extra storage um, for restocking later. And I added a new Canadian custom. Place valuables in chests. So they follow the first custom. They take off their shoes. And then they think, oh, well, my shoes are kind of valuable. Put it inside. Surprise! <laughs> they can't get the stuff back out and then it's mine. That's another way for us to make money. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We got a clock over there. Speaking of llamas, the shop has actually been doing quite well on the server here. Like, probably at least two or three stacks of blue shinies from it already. And it hasn't been stocked most of the time. So I actually went and made an effort to stock it now. Even got some blue ice in here finally. I ended up going about 6,000 blocks away from spawn to find a, one of those biomes with the icebergs in. So check this out. I actually really like this. It's a simple thing, but I think it's pretty cool. So you open one door, the other door opens 
with it. We got these on top of the observers. So we can tell when we open one of them. And it stays open for a while and then automatically closes. So I ditched the pressure plates that were here. And I wanted to try to do something a little bit more fancy. I'll just show you the redstone to this real quick because I did it myself here in case you're curious. So that one's at three over there. This one is at one. Those go up to the double doors on each side. And then there's also a piece of redstone dust on both sides hidden there. Um, then we have a delay with these two comparators. And then this locks the signal so the observers don't keep triggering uh, like an endless loop in, this, in the circuit here. Then if we go outside here, we can check out this armor stand guy. So he's sitting on a slime block right now. And the idea is he just randomly launches who knows when. It's pretty rare, but when it happens, it's kind of like a, a cool little thing if you happen to see it. So this, again, is a circuit I made myself. In case you're curious, we got a vine that grows in front of the observer, which triggers the observer and then causes the piston to extend and destroy the vine so that it can grow again in the future. All right, everybody. So let's head over to the stats poker game here next that we built with uh, Tango the other day. I saw, I think it was B-Dubs, Corellis, XB, and Tango played it together since then as well. We got some tips here. So that's cool. It's getting used. Always nice to see that. People are having fun with it. Um, in the comments, I saw a couple suggestions that I thought were pretty good. So one of them, really simple here, just to add a couple select brews to like a menu uh, for a little bit of decoration. I guess we can't place these... Uh, in frames here there's a trap door uh, I guess we could put them on the trap doors though would that be okay it's probably fine right yeah so I made a couple select brews here that we can show off we got BTF 3's firewater back to the future 3 that we will will have there we got Cubs cream of the crop we got granny Doc's bath water and this is probably the best pun I'll ever make in my lifetime and the fact it's a night vision potion, oh, it's like the icing on the cake. <laughs> Lunar Luminance. Uh-huh. Now, I think the biggest and best suggestion for the game, though, that I saw in the comments was to add some high-low system to the game so that people with low stats that don't play as much still have a chance of winning if we randomize it. So I think the best way of doing that, I think we can just put a lamp here. So if it's on, then maybe high wins that round and if it's off then low wins could probably do something like that i'll just have to add some kind of randomizer to the back here okay so we're going to use a very simple randomizer here we have two droppers facing each other but with one item that doesn't stack in it with a signal strength of three on the comparator and then the other one that that does stack it only has a signal strength of one so it won't reach the glowstone lamp here okay so we got it installed here it's a little bit nasty looking it's just like a a pimple on the side of the house but uh you know it didn't look very good before anyway we still gotta probably add some more detail in the back here to make things nicer but i'm just cover gonna cover over it for today so that's our 50 50 randomizer uh we hit the button over here and it's gonna either stay on or go off the hermits don't have to play with this though like it's up to them if they want to it's just another option another function in the game that they can choose to use that time it went off, so low would win the round, like if our stat was low. We do have rules and stuff for the... Well, that's new. I moved the trap door. <laughs> we do have rules for the hermits here, but they're free to change them to whatever they want as they play. That does take up a little bit more land now, though, so we're going to put another diamond block on the stack here to pay for it from our tip jar. Cool. So we got ourselves a second beacon now, guys. It's very nice to have uh, another one so we don't have to dismantle ours if we need to go mine clay or something. <laughs> uh, a lot of people don't know this, but if you have efficiency 5 on your pick and just taste 1, you only need the tiny beacon for that, uh, you can instant mine the clay here. You don't need the full pyramid to do it. Very good, very good. So we got about two and a half boxes of clay here from that. Just a quick trip. We're going to need the light gray stuff for today for what I got planned. So last episode, we did the enchanting room over there, which I think turned out pretty nice. I think it looks good. But if you look <laughs> um, at the rest of our base here, it's a drop in the bucket. <laughs> it's nothing, honestly. So I want to build a pretty big base. Uh, like I got stuff laid out pretty far apart from each other here. And I've kind of realized my original plan of having gizmos mixed with random blocks isn't going to work. 
Not at all. It's because if we have too many random blocks, it's going to be uh, really ugly, I think. It's not going to be nice on the eyes. We want to use the random block stuff like we did over here as sort of the mortar in our bricks. Um, just like the fill up spaces. So we need more more bricks in our design here and the gizmos aren't enough to do it. So we're going to actually build like decorative structural stuff in our, our base here. Yeah, so basically we're doing a patchwork style with our base. We're going to place things randomly in it and then try mortar them together with random blocks or random designs is the idea. So especially with walls are going to be tricky if we don't uh, include some structural stuff, like some decorative, nice looking stuff that's not random. Okay, so we got a spot picked out over here to try it out. Uh, and again, we kind of need stuff that we can build quickly too. That'll fill up space, so... We're gonna just spam a bunch of clay here to begin with to serve as the bulk of our wall. And I'm gonna make this go up like at least 15 blocks, I think. Oh yeah, looks pretty good. Might need a little bit more to it though. <laughs> Let's go for some birch logs. Oh, I got some of them. Just bear with me for a second. I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, yeah, let's fill in over here and here. No, not there. Let's, uh, let's put it over here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So we got some lines on the edges there to focus our attention on the middle. We just need to put something good in the middle. Actually, I'm a little surprised. Like, when we're up close to it like this, man, it looks so big. But when you're at the Googler there, it's actually a really tiny... Tiny thing in comparison to the rest of the area. Um, but it, it's okay, because uh, you'll see. You'll see. We have more planned with this. So we're going to try add a bottom border to this as well. We got our side borders. Let's do a bottom border. And we're going to change it up slightly with some stripped geisha here. A nice orange. Doesn't really go too well with this. But if we add like something to separate them, like a dark oak here. Yes. We have, we have the answer then. And I think I'll go, let's actually go down one more. Or no, let's do it like, uh, maybe we, we do it like this and then another one above. Yeah, we're going to keep that. I like it a lot, actually. So one of the main ideas behind the monstrosity build here is if I have a fun idea, I want to be able to just do it. I want to have fun building my base and not be like, oh, that's a good idea, but it doesn't really suit the theme or uh, it doesn't really seem practical to me. I don't, I don't care about any of that stuff. I just want to have fun. <laughs> uh, that, which is why like a patchwork style base is going to be perfect for us. Um, so the fun idea I kind of had over here. Let's see, we got to kind of shape this a bit better. Let's actually pop that out and we'll kind of curve it a bit more. Oh, it's getting dark. B-dubs, save me. Thank you. <laughs> just just at the right time there. Yeah, over here. I can see I only got two nether bricks there. So we, I don't think we have any in the system, but I know we probably have a bit of netherrack. So I'm doing a search for it. And then we're just going to smelt it and make nether bricks. Building a super smelter is pretty high on my priority list as well. So we'll probably be doing that soon in a future episode. Uh-huh, so check it out. You might be able to figure out what we're doing now. <laughs> uh, so I was trying to think, like, how are we going to actually fill up our wall space in this base? And I got to thinking, maybe we just build a big wall and then hang uh, a picture frame on it and, like, do some pixel art inside that using the blocks in Minecraft. So we have a 5 by 7 area there to build a picture, and I think it might look pretty cool. So the first thing I'm going to try build here, we bought that wool from Beef's shop today. And I just want to try build a chicken. So we're going to have like a layer of green here for the grass. And like some orange feet. And uh, I'll, I'll have to stumble through it here a bit, I'm sure. But probably go for white wool for the body. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> yes. Okay. And there we go. We got ourselves a, a little chicken in the, in the picture frame. Oh, man. That really stands out, too. I, I'm so happy with how that turned out. Uh, I actually really enjoy doing pixel art. Like, I think it's a lot of fun. Because the challenge with it is to try to squeeze as much information in as much in as uh, small a space as you can so it's still recognizable. And you can look at that and clearly see it's a chicken, right? Even though it's such a, a small area. Um, I think we might do a couple more of these. 
I'm not sure how I'm going to position them yet, but let's try add a little more detail to this as well uh, to like take it to the next level. So I normally hate granite. I don't like granite at all. But the one case I actually think it looks pretty cool is when you mix it in with the gray terracotta like this and just have like odd blocks here and there. Yeah, I think that was a good idea. So it's a bit more interesting to look at now with the textured granite in there. It's a bit more chaotic as well, which will help blend it in with the chaos. <laughs> That's probably going to be around it. I'm not sure yet, though. Uh, I'm, I'm planning on building a few more of these, like maybe two more at least. And I don't know if I want to put them like side by side or if I want to scatter them like one over there, one on this side of the wall. Um, I got to think about it for a bit, but I want to try to do a bit more pixel art. And it's a good way of filling up space on the walls. Now that we have the design, it'll be easy to copy and make little adjustments to if we want to. Uh, I want to check out this guy. He just showed up here. I haven't seen a wandering trader in like forever. I've only found like one or two on the server so far. Uh, what's he got? He's got Tango's Head for emeralds, spruce planks, dried kelp, dispensers, emeralds. Good sir, I would like to buy some birch logs. Alright, we got eight from him. Cool. What do these look like? Oh, snappers. <laughs> so check it out, everybody. I've been at it for quite a while here, but we got two more added in. And man, I had so much fun making these guys. Uh, I'm not sure which one's my favorite. It, it, they're so cool though <laughs> so it's a really simple idea but man it's uh it's pretty neat to look at i think so we went for a parrot and we went for an ocelot in the center there these these two guys the chicken and the parrot i did side profiles on and i tried to do that with the, the ocelot as well but it really wasn't uh turning out too well so i made him face forward uh you can see he's got like his paws in front kind of like how cats sit uh, on their hind legs there and then he's got a tail that swings out and it actually kind of sticks out a little bit. I didn't make them totally flat. Um, like I added the wing on that guy. The wing on that chicken. I think that adds a lot to it. Um, but yeah, by far that guy in the middle was the toughest to do. He's kind of kind of crazy detailed. Uh, but I do really like how the parrot looks. I like the colors on it. And like the granite feet. <laughs> uh -huh. So uh, let's just take a little fly away. They look pretty good from most angles, too, it seems, so I'm happy about that. That's one thing that always worries me with builds. It's like, oh yeah, it looks good when you're when you're head on, but even like if you're flying sideways here, I think it looks pretty neat. I added in some prismarine at the bottom. I don't know if we're going to keep that, but I uh, thought it might be a, a cool pop effect, you know? Something a little brighter. So I did stagger these as well, so they go that way one block and up one block each one so that they're not like a straight line to try and make it a bit more interesting too. I wasn't sure about one thing. Maybe I'll get you guys' feedback on it. Those like chains or something I added to the side of them. I just did that for an extra detail feature. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to keep them or not. So I left the one in the middle without them. Uh, and I'll see what you guys say about that. Or maybe we just do something else besides that even. But I'm not, I'm not too sure about them. I'm kind of like 50-50 at the moment. But yeah, that took a whole bunch of time, so we got to think about ending this episode soon. <laughs> Thankfully, I got a few more things to show you, starting with... Oh, look at this amazing contraption over here. We finally built a cactus farm, and it's mass-producing cactus like you wouldn't believe. I was a good boy. I spent a bit of time cleaning up around our base here. So remember, we had the enchanting station here, a bunch of chests scattered throughout there and over here. Got most of it cleaned up. There's still a few a few things to deal with. We spent a bit of time last episode building our enchanting room, and then we moved our stuff in here now. So you can tell, oh, we got a quite a few picks in the in that barrel. All three of those are extended. Only one on the shovel though, and two on the helmets, one on the boots. So we need we need chest plates, we need pants, swords, axes. I really like this display system. It's it's pretty neat. <laughs> uh huh. And also, I uh, this is like a overly detailed thing that I don't really need to do, but I named all the all the tools in the front here, so when we hover over them, the text pops out. And I even named the barrels on an anvil, so it says shovels up here, swords. Why I did that? Don't ask me. I just thought, let's make it super fancy. Uh-huh, so you might recall the other day, Goatfather Duckem asked us to be his Avenger to take down Corellus and B-double-O for what they did to his goat. 
We went after Corellis. We tried oh so hard to kill him, but we just couldn't do it. I kind of failed there. Um, so I decided to try a different strategy with B-dubs. I, I thought I would try to kill him with kindness. I heard that's a thing, right? So I went over to his place. I baked him a cake, but it wasn't any ordinary cake. It was a trap cake. As soon as he ate a slice, he would get a double whammy. He would get a message to say, have a good day, buddy. Two acts of kindness at once. Now, unfortunately, though, that didn't seem to kill him. It just kind of made him happier. So that didn't really work out. So I decided to just go over there myself, get the job done right. <laughs> I'll just sneak up. He's going to turn around and see me, and he's going to freak out. Look at this guy. He, he's, he's oblivious. Oh, it was wonderful. B-Dubs ended up giving me a tour of his new place. All right, the inspiration. It's like a little bit of, um, I don't know, like uh, uh, I wanted to go really bright and light. Here's the kitchen. Oh, um, lots of storage. Yeah. Yeah, lots of storage, lots of storage. I'm actually using Oh, it, you and know, you got a pizza oven. I think it was at that moment that I realized I'm not really a good hitman after all. Yeah, yeah, pizza oven, brick oven. Well, not brick, actually. Sandstone. Sand brick. Uh, oven. Yeah, sand brick oven. Yeah, yeah. It's just kind of the living area. You know, yeah. I have never known you to make only one story. You, you always go for at least two, right? Oh, you got to have two stories. You yeah. have to. You yeah. have to. And look at the... Look, this this is just kind of a, on a whim, you know? Let's right. make it a loft. Be careful. You wouldn't want to fall down there. No, no, no. Absolutely not. No, no. Yeah, it no. hurts. Yeah, you, you should be careful, too. Yeah, that would yeah. that would really hurt. Um, and then bedroom, you know? I went for kind of a nice wallpaper and some decorations yeah. and closet and whatnot. Um, Very cozy. I like it. Yeah. And then, and then last but not least is my attic up here. And like a this third isn't story. Really Oh yeah, third oh, it's, you got it's a bit of a duck down yeah. here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This is for <laughs> short guys. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is my lookout tower. <laughs> oh or wow! I can snipe. Yeah. I can snipe anybody that comes after me. Yeah. Boom. You probably don't have to worry about that though, right? Nope, 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 nope. Well, I'm this is good. this is great, B double O. You know, you're such a a good builder. Mm hmm. I, I've told you this before, but you really are. Amazing. So, yes, I so am. detailed. You want to hire me, don't you? That's what this is all about. I'm thinking about, about need, it. I'm you, thinking about it. You need, you need, and guess what? Guess what? When the time comes, I'm going to give you a good deal, too. Look at this place. This is, this is wonderful. Now, bear in mind, though, Doc M never actually paid me to be his hitman. <laughs> so, you can't expect too much from me, right? I hope. Uh-huh. Anyways, um, th there is actually a deeper story behind all that, but it's kind of hard to explain. So I think we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> uh, so over at the, the ice place here, this is the other thing I wanted to show you today that we needed the TNT for. Uh, I ended up building up over here. This is uh, a tree farm. It's, it drops TNT down on the trees here. It's a design I, I did in my Let's Play series. I was hoping, uh, kind of expecting actually, that we would get to finishing this today. It's very close, but not quite there. Uh, I, I wanted to show you guys it in action, but I think that's going to have to wait till next episode because we really need to wrap up for today. Um, but yeah, I did a couple more things around here. I messed around with the pillars because I don't really like the snow ones. I think we'll use acacia wood, and I got some stripped dark oak there. And maybe we can sneak in some more details, and then it'll look pretty good, but... Uh, I have a really hard time building with snow. I find like nothing goes with it. To finish off our episode today, I think I want to buy a llama. I've been waiting all day to do this. Uh, our boy Beef, look at this. I'm so proud of him. He made an amazing llama store here. It's like a Pez dispenser loaded up with llamas and you gotta choose which one you want. Oh, it's so cool. And the redstone on this, I can't believe. Well, I mean, Beef taught me everything I know about redstone, so yes, I can believe it, but still, I can't believe he did the redstone on this the way he did. Pretty incredible. Um, I think there's supposed to be a track here. It's missing, though, which has me worried. I'm just going to put one there because I don't want my llama to splatter on the ground here. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to buy uh, we're gonna buy one here. So let's get a diamond block. It's one diamond block. You choose what color you want, so you can go white. We can go cream. I think the one Beef gave us at our base is a cream one, right? 
So I think I might go for a brown one, actually. I like the brown llamas. We pay here, one block each. Bam. Keep it separate. And then select your desired llama color and push the button below. So we did that. We went for brown. We hit the button. We hit the button. Oh yeah, here we go. Ta-da! <laughs> And we just we just purchased ourselves a llama. Uh, somehow I got to get him home though. I'm not sure how to do that. He's also got like some carpets here to try different outfits out. Oh, and he does supply leads. Okay, good. No, he doesn't. He ma he makes me pay. What a what a guy. And it's gonna work because I, I really don't want to uh, go back home to get one. <laughs> uh huh. I'm gonna keep his minecart though as as punishment. He's not getting this back, it's mine now. Alright, we got it. The perfect end to an episode. We got Sandy City, finally. Together at last. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Bye-bye.